Hi guys and welcome. In today's topic, we'll be taking a look at AWS Lambda, which is a serverless compute service offered by Amazon. We'll see how it works and learn about its features. And at the very end of this video, we'll create our own Lambda function and add an event to it so that it gets triggered. So stick till the end of the video and let's get started. So let's get started and define our agenda. We'll start by talking about AWS Lambda followed by its features. After that, we'll see how Lambda works and then learn about its pricing structure. And at the very end, we'll have a demo in which we will create our own Lambda function and add an event so that it gets triggered. So let's start. What is AWS Lambda? According to Amazon, AWS Lambda is a serverless compute service. What this means is that developers don't have to worry about which AWS resource to launch or how they are going to manage those resources. All that is needed is just to put the code on Lambda and it gets executed. It's that simple. This not just saves time, but also allows developers to focus on other major areas for service improvement. And AWS Lambda is used to execute backend code by automatically managing the AWS resources. And when we say manage, it involves starting or ending instances, or running checkups, or updating, or patching for new updates. So what are the features of AWS Lambda? Well, there are so many features that come to mind. So here, we'll list eight major features. The first one is AWS allows you to build custom backend services. You can use AWS Lambda to create new backend application services triggered on demand using the Lambda API. Lambda processes custom events instead of servicing these on the client, helping you avoid client platform variation, reduce battery drain, and enable easier updates. Coming on to our next point, it is bring your own code with Lambda. With AWS Lambda, there are no new languages or tools or even frameworks to learn. You can use the third party libraries or even native ones, and you can also package any code as a Lambda layer and manage and share them across multiple functions. Now, coming on to the next point, it is completely automated administration. Well, AWS Lambda manages all the infrastructure to run your code on highly available, fault tolerant infrastructure, freeing you to focus on building differentiated backend services. With Lambda, you never have to update the underlying operating system when a patch is released or worry about resizing or adding new servers as your usage grows. Moving on to our next point, it is extend other AWS services with custom logic. Well, the thing is AWS Lambda allows you to add custom logic to AWS resources such as S3 buckets or DynamoDB tables so that you can easily apply compute to data as it enters or moves through the cloud. It is easy to get started with Lambda. First, you create your function by uploading your code right into the Lambda console. Then you choose the memory, then the IAM role, and then you specify the AWS resource to trigger the function, which can be a particular S3 bucket, DynamoDB table, or even Kinesis. Now for our next point, it is automated scaling. Well, the thing is, AWS Lambda invokes your code only when needed, and automatically scales to support the rate of incoming requests without any manual configuration. So there's no limit to the number of requests your code can handle. AWS Lambda typically starts running your code within milliseconds of an event. And since Lambda scales automatically, the performance remains significantly high even in the free. And since Lambda scales automatically, the performance remains consistently high as the event frequency increases. The sixth point, and that is orchestrate multiple functions. Well, you can build AWS Step Functions workflow to coordinate multiple AWS Lambda functions for complex or long running tasks. Step functions let you define workflows that trigger a collection of Lambda functions using sequential, parallel, branching, and error handling steps. With Step Functions and Lambda, you can build stateful, long running processes for applications and backends. Moving on to our next point, it is the trust and integrity control. Well, code signing for AWS Lambda allows you to verify that only unaltered code published by approved developers is deployed in your Lambda function. You can simply create digitally signed code artifacts and configure your Lambda functions to verify the signatures at the deployment. This increases the speed and agility of your application development, even with the last team, while enforcing high security standards. And finally, let's talk about Lambda's flexible resource mode. Well, you can choose the amount of memory you want to allocate to your functions, and AWS Lambda allocates proportional CPU power, network bandwidth, and disk input output. Now let's talk about how Lambda works. Some of you may already know a function runs only when it is called. 
these are the event at the source which triggers the lambda function and then the task is executed let's take an example in order for you to understand this think that you have an app for image uploading now when you want to upload an image there are various tasks involved such as storing resizing or compressing now the task of uploading a pixel can be thought of as an event source for a trigger this trigger calls lambda function and then all these tasks can be executed using lambda function in this example the developer needs to define event source and upload the code let's say in this instance we will be uploading image in object form to s3 bucket this uploading activity becomes the event source or the trigger this entire process can be defined into five steps the first step will be the user uploads the image or the object to the bucket which has notifications attached to it for the lambda function now the second step would be this notification is read by s3 and decides where to send the notification this notification is sent to lambda and it acts as an invoke call to the function execution role in lambda can be defined in the iam or identity and access management to give access permission for aws resources like in this example where s3 uploading image action was used as a trigger to invoke the required lambda function aws has essentially provided the lambda service in order to streamline lots of processes in order to save developers time the developer can therefore focus on the core competencies of whatever products they are working on whether it be an app a website or even any other service this lambda also follows a pay per use service this means that you pay for only what you use you are charged based on the number of requests you make to your function and also the duration for which your code executes when it comes to the request you are charged for the number of requests you make across all the lambda functions so aws lambda counts the request each time it starts executing in response to an event source the duration is calculated from the moment the code starts executing till it either terminates or returns this is rounded up to the nearest 100 of milliseconds and the price depends on the amount of memory you are located to your function now moving on to the hard done section okay so in this demo we'll create a simple lambda function and this function will read all the names of our s3 bucket and provide them as an output then we will invoke this function using a trigger and then verify if the function was invoked or not and what the output was and in case you don't know how you can create your own aws account do check out our other videos in which we talk about aws account creation you can also check out the links in the description for a complete course on aws which will get you ready for the role of aws architect okay so let's do this so our first step is to create our lambda function so what we'll do is we'll go to the lambda so let's open it and remember as i already said the objective of our function is to return all of the names of our s3 bucket names so here i'll just open my s3 and let's see all the bucket names that we have so as you can see i have a few buckets right here and it says here that i have a total of 9 buckets and as you can see the names of all my buckets are right here so the objective of my lambda function is to return the names of all these buckets as my output so let's just do that so first thing we need to go to aws lambda and create our function so first we'll need to create a function for it so let's click on this button and provide our function a name so let's say we call a function call one and for the runtime i'll choose python 3.9 and let's hit on create function so now that our function has been created let's provide it the code so first i'll delete this and i'll write in my own code first i'll import json and boto3 and i'll create my s3 and let's provide our function the event and context will be here and uh, and here we'll need our array so here we'll need our array and for that i'll provide it name like list bucket and this will be empty for now and now we'll run a for loop 
for all our bucket. And then we'll print our bucket names. And then we'll append them to our list. And afterwards, we'll just return. So here, for the status code, I think you might already know that status code requires 200. And let's return the body, which will be our array. So essentially, the work that our function is trying to do is get all of the names of these buckets and then provide them as our output. So let's test this out. So here, let's just call it an event. And let's save. And let's test. So again, let's wait for a while. So here we get our response saying access denied. And I think I know this why. This is because the S3 permission we still don't have. So we cannot do a read on it. So what we need to do is we need to get permissions for it. So here, let's get those permissions. So this is our execution rule. So what we'll do is we'll just provide our access role. So what we'll do is we'll provide ourselves with full access for the S3. And here, let's add those permissions. So I'll attach these policy and then we'll try our running our function again. So, okay, uh, I think we are ready to test it now. So let's test our code once again. So as you can see, we get our output. And if we look at it, we get the status code 200 and then the body returns the name of all my buckets. So as you can see, bucket for Lambda invoke, that is over here. And it was successfully executed and we get that output. So again, this was all just the Lambda function part. So what we actually need to do is we need to add a trigger so that this function gets executed. So let's say that whenever I upload to this bucket, that Lambda function that I just created should get executed. So essentially what we are going to do is we are going to add that functionality to it. So here under properties, we'll add our event. So as you can see, I already have an event right here, but I can also add another one. So let's click on create event notification. Let's call it even X. And here I'll select put. And under here, I'll choose my function, which was caller one. And let's save those changes. So now that has been done, what we need to do is we need to upload and verify if a code gets executed, which is this Lambda function. So let's verify this in our CloudWatch. So if everything is set up perfectly, when I upload any XYZ file over here, the Lambda function should be invoked, which is caller one in our case. So I'll hit on upload. And let's add some random files. And let's hit on upload. And we get this message. So if we take a look at our Lambda function, it should provide us with some data that this call was invoked. So as you can see, we had some recent invocations. And if we go over to our CloudWatch, we can actually see them in detail. So here, you can see our log streams. And here, under this, you should be able to see the output. So just like that, Whenever a file is uploaded, 
our function is automatically triggered and that is stored in the CloudWatch. And with that, the demo is concluded. And if you have made it till here, thank you for sticking till then. I hope that this session motivates you to get started in your career journey or even learn AWS for fun. And as always, if you have any questions, do comment them and we will get back to you as soon as possible.